Good morning, wherever you are. Good evening, if it's evening for you. Good day. Gentlemen, how are you? It's good to be with you. Bibi, how are you? Good good morning, Graham and Mohammed. It is wonderful to be with you, and I am loving this conversation which we are having. Good to be here. Thank you. Well, my gosh, we've got to live up to that expectation today, haven't we? We haven't even started. Mohammed, how are you in Bahrain this morning? It's a beautiful morning, and I'm happy to be back here in this session with you guys. Well, really good. What did we say we were going to talk about today? I seem to remember that we were going to talk about leadership and empowerment. 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 One of my favorite words. So what does empowerment mean to you, Muhammad? You mean, you know, I met this um, company I met in uh, Riyadh lately. He said, my company is Empower. I said, wow, uh, I love this word. He said, no, 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 no. It's not Empower <laughs> with E. He said, in power. In power. I said, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was, a tech, it was a tech company, but then I said, yeah, what is really in leadership the difference between in power and empower. So I think by distinguishing the two, we'll come to know what a good word is, empower with E. Yeah, yeah. It's a beautiful word and a wonderful practice. It's a wonderful thing to do. So, Phoebe, tell me, what is your response to the word empower and empowerment? Yeah, the, the empowerment which I feel here, in the here and now, that is what I want to highlight, you know, empowering, which means including in the process, yeah. providing opportunity to share thoughts and ideas and take actions so that I am owning and building that process with full accountability. So empowerment is in the, the inclusion process which happens. It is also... Uh, giving that decision making to the individual so i feel i am empowered in this process where i can share my voice i can share my thoughts i can take my decisions so if we're in a situation with a manager and the manager micromanages what happens to empowerment it disappears you know <laughs> Absolutely. Micro micro micromanagement yeah. is uh, what take the culture down when and empowerment is zero in that process. So yeah. you know it ha everyone has to be cautious on that part. Am I disempowering or am I empowering? Yeah, and you know a manager could here's here's a simple example. A manager could say to one of his team. Oh, look, I've got this task that I need to have done. So, uh, uh, look, can you do? Oh, no, look, actually, I'll get, I'll get Mark to do it. He's better at this. What, what, what does that do for that individual? Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, okay. Mm. So here's <laughs> one, one underlying point that I want to make about empowerment. I could spend a whole lot of time, but I'm not going to talk about empowerment. There are people generally, and this may come as a surprise, don't always have a great belief in their own capabilities. They don't believe, you know, we often talk about the imposter syndrome. People often think, oh, no, I'm not good enough. How can I be doing this? Why, why, why am I in this situation? No, no, don't ask me. This is often the internal voice that they're dealing with. The internal voice is saying, yeah, you can't do that. It's too hard for you. You're not, you're not sufficiently qualified, not educated. You can't do that. So the internal dialogue for that person is saying, I can't do it. And often the words of people around them reinforces that. Yes, Even though that's yes. the people around them don't know that they are reinforcing it, but they can be sometimes doing that. So I've always been aware of the words that we say and the impact that we can have on others and how we can lift people up by empowering them. In the Leadership Challenge, we call this enable others to act. Enable others to act. And here's a statistic that I often use, which is so important, that when people are challenged, 
And that's what, often what, ha what happens when we are empowering people. It's, let me give you a simple example. I've got a major project that needs to be implemented and put into place. If I say to one of my team members, hey, I want you to take this on, I know there's a lot of effort involved. I know there's a, a lot of responsibility required. But I know that your ability to do, will be able, you'll be able to do this with your experience, your attention to detail, your commitment to what we're doing. I know you can do a great job. So when I've said that, what's the likely internal voice saying for that person? It, it, it's he's saying, well, you know what? I think I can. Yes, because I'm <laughs> showing that I believe in that person. And here's the, the statistic that I mentioned. 96% of people say they are perform at their best when they're given a challenge. And quite often when we are giving people a challenge and we're empowering them and saying, you know what, I know you can do this. Oh, and I know if you've got any problems or any issues, you come and talk to me about it, but I know you're going to do a great job. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, right, okay. What's the alternative as I said earlier, when a manager mm. delegates and then says, oh, no, let, actually, I'll give it to Mark. He's had much more experience. It just, it actually really has that person feeling disempowered. So as leaders, we really must be looking at ways to empower people. I saw a, a, a video a while ago that we use in the Leadership Challenge and one of the gentlemen that's it's reported on in terms of the way he encourages people, that he will say to people, what is it that is getting in your way? It's certainly not me. And he's mm. the manager. He's mm. saying, I'm not stopping you. <laughs> What's getting in your way? Oh, okay. So tell me more about... I, I, sorry. I have a question here. Um, as a leader, he might think uh, the following all right, I want to empower my people, but they are not ready yet. Actually, I know they are not qualified on a technical level, at least. How can I empower someone who is not ready? It's not like just I believe in him and magic will happen. So where is it that I can empower and where is it that it takes time to empower? Any, any thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, look... <laughs> And when it, when it comes to that, let's just assume that you, there is an importance placed on technical aspects of certain processes, correct? Um, and you've done a lot of work in the health and safety area, and you would know that in certain areas, got to follow the process, got to do things safely and so on. Absolutely. And so the knowledge of the people involved is it technically is, is important. But remember this also. People moving into doing something which they haven't done before is a learning experience for them. And I would be saying to this person who I know is not yet at the level where I can totally walk away and know that it's going to be an amazing job. I could say to this person, look, I really think this is a great learning opportunity for you. I know you mm. haven't yet got the technical skills, but do you want to get those technical skills? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, here's what I'm going to do. We'll go on a pathway, a journey, if you like, of you learning these processes. And I'll guide you along the way. I'm not going to show you what to do, but I'll guide you along the way because I know that if we have put some steps in place for you to have the learning along the way, that you will embrace this and really enjoy what you're doing and not only learn, but you'll do a great job. Now, what am I going to do as the leader? I'm going to kind of keep an eye on him, right? When I say keep an eye on him, I'm going to make sure that he's not going to fall off the edge or, or cause any technical problems. Uh, but it's also about the discussion that, along the way that I'm having with this person. So how do you it's, – it's coaching, of course. So how do you think you're going? What else do you think you need to learn? Well, you might then say, well, I think you need to learn this. And if you learn this, then that would be a major step forward for you. How does that sound for you? Yeah, that, that's also empowering, empowering him to also learn, not only to act. That's very yeah, absolutely. I think. Absolutely. You know, I've long since, by the way, I've long since said that the act of empowerment, empowering others, breaks the law of physics, 
the first law of physics. And I'm not a, phys a, a physics expert. I was going to say I'm not a physician, but that's not the right word. <laughs> I'm not a physician either. <laughs> but um, physics, the law of physics, the first law of physics, doesn't it say for every action there is an opposite and equal reaction or, or similar, okay? I may not have got the words quite right. So, which kind of says that if you do something, if, if we're lifting something, something goes the other, you know, it's that kind of thing. There's an opposite and equal reaction. But when you empower someone, unlike the idea that you're losing power, I'm empowering them, I'm giving my power away, you don't lose your power, you actually gain more power. And by that, I mean your confidence and your self-assurance and the belief that the other person has in you. Right? It's certainly not a destructive power you know, by any means, but you, if you main, if you control the power, you are actually not only, only disempowering them, the other person, but you're disempowering yourself. Yeah, I I don't know what you think, Phoebe, but uh, I find this hard to believe sometimes. And um, really, the person who doesn't give power, although he has all the reasons to do so is really afraid to lose power. So how can we convince him? What can we say in this regard? Uh. Th th thank you, Mohammed. Uh, maybe I, I, one aspect which I just want to add is, you know, when, when we are empowering, it is actually helping you as a leader in that space, you know, and you are also developing the leader within your team, within your organization. And, you know, as as you communicate with that person in your team, communicate your intention. Make it clear, this is what I want. And this is what good outcome look like. Make it crystal clear. And what, what, uh, what, what, what are the don'ts in that process? So that it is clear. Quite often, in many circumstances, this communication doesn't happen. And people feel sometimes lost. I remember my early days in the bank in which, you know, we, we, uh, um, I, I was in a cash counter providing cash. So, you know, in the initial days, um, you, you are only given a small limit where you, are, you can only clear a check up to 25,000 of value. Now, someone was mentoring me in that process. And what happened is at the end, he provided more delegatory responsibility so that he gets freed and I am mm -hmm. empowered to take the decision and I become more conscious and cautious in applying the authority delegated to me, making mm -hmm. the work smoother, the client happy and the speed of process improves. So, and it also frees the time of the leader, you know, in that process, rather than each time coming for his approval, which actually disrupt his flow of work no. and progress. I don't know. And I progress. Think, I think, you know, this is, we're talking banking, we're talking money. And, uh, you know, that leader should be standing right beside you. And manager should be standing right beside you and ticking everything off and making sure that you're doing the, oh, of course not. This is the way people grow, isn't it? When we empower people, this is the way we grow. You now, while we're talking, it reminds me of something that happened quite some years ago in my days of, in another career. Um, and we something needed to be decided, a dis big decision needed to be made that involved Hong Kong and, Ro and Italy and Rome, perhaps more specifically. And well, I was having a discu discussion in the boardroom one evening when we were having an end-of-day drink with the um, managing director, which we didn't every day do it, but you know, quite regularly he'd invite senior people in and we had a discussion about what was happening during the day or even it was just a social discussion. That was okay. Uh, and he said to me, so how are things going with this particular project? And I said, well, we need to get some on-the-ground information. And we, we, ideally, we, we need to visit Hong Kong and, and Rome. And he said, well, why don't you go? And I said, w w when should I leave? <laughs> and he said, well, I'll finish your drink. <laughs> and that, oh, okay. 
I think I went two days later, but certainly that somewhat oblique comment almost of finish mm. your drink uh, before you said so that you can go to Hong Kong and then go to Rome, you know, he wasn't holding me back at all. And probably if I'd been in to talk to him earlier about the the, the need for on-the-ground information, the need for someone to go and research and talk to people there, and I think I spent a, two days in Hong Kong and two days in Rome and then come back, come back and made the decision. Uh, but, you know, he was not saying, well, we need to meet and talk, we need this research. He said, go and make the decision. Go and do what you need to do and you decide. And as I said, when I said, well, when should I go? He said, finish your drink, <laughs> then you can go. <laughs> but empowering also implies, applies in so many aspects of our lives. You know, we sometimes in our conversations talk about parenting and the, the mirror that exists between parenting and, and leading in, in the corporate world. You know, and I, uh, I say that for, yeah. when, I was, when I was a father of much younger children that I, I didn't direct them. I didn't tell them what to do. I influenced them. And there was one instance, which I won't go into in, in detail now, but one instance with, with one of my daughters. And it was an instance where I, at her age, was empowering her and said, I know that you're going to do the very best you can with this. It's, and I was basically saying it's up to you to make the best of this. So over to you. I'm not going to be on your back. I'm not going to be reminding you. I'm not going to be telling you. I'm not going to be upset or angry. You now can make the best decision for you. And I still think that that conversation I had with her was the best conversation that I could have had. And I would always encourage that with people, to, even with children, to let, help them make a decision but then not be telling them what to do. And, I, of course, mm. there's, there's, there's barriers and there's lines to be drawn. You know, we, we, we certainly can't be telling children to run across a railway line um, or do something that's dangerous, and I certainly don't mean that. But well, as far as possible, empower people. It, people yeah. into our into our sphere of influence, make them feel better yeah. at what they're doing, and make them see the possibilities. In the leadership challenge, you know, to get a little bit more specific, we talk about giving in terms of enabling others to act, giving your power away. So, what sort of things does that mean? Giving your power away. By the way, the opposite yes, of that, let, let me just hold and say one comment first. Why do managers hold their power within and they also hold information? Why? Yeah, that was my question originally. If they do this, anyone who does this actually is in fear and insecure that he will lose power. When, you, when we say you give power, it doesn't mean it's not like uh, I have uh, two apples and I give you one and then I, I'm, I have only one. No, it doesn't reduce. Power doesn't reduce. Uh, when you give it away, consciously, of course, consciously, and I like what Phoebe said, consciously, cautiously. All right? So uh, I remember this instance in uh, my company when I was the safety superintendent. So I do my uh, walkabout and this department, I tell them, why is this hazard still there in the building? And they said, oh, well, we raised it through the system and it has gone through the channels to the maintenance department relevant to this. It's been three months. They haven't done yet. So we have done our part. I looked at them and I said, uh, do you have a brush, paint, tools? One, two, three, four. They said, yeah, we can get them. I said, I authorize you to fix this hazard right away today. I am from the Central Safety Department. Really? Can we? Yeah. And I just left, and I got a call after some time. They said, please come, please come, Mr. Mohammed. We want you to see what we did. And they were very happy. They painted. They made uh, the hazard clear and removed the danger. And we took a photo. <laughs> and after that, these people were, I mean, office people, imagine, did what maintenance people should do. So I have not given them my power but at least I p permitted them to act in this in the safety manner to save other people immediately, not wait for months for someone to interfere. 
There are all sorts of power you can give, including to those not within your authority. But let me just ask this question: If if what they didn't do, if they if what they didn't do, does that make sense? <laughs> Would it could it have led to an injury? Yes. So therefore, they are, therefore they are going to feel completely disempowered when it leads to an injury. Exactly. Yeah. 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 But yeah, they were they were just lucky, and and uh, the more the action is not taken, it's not the injury also, but the frustration and the morale that uh, I mean negative morale that will spread everyone in quietness while they are quiet. Things are not getting done in this department. You know, you know that feeling. You know. But here's the other line to that: not, things are not getting done. What I, they also think is nobody cares. Mm, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they also should be caring, and they should be stepping up and becoming more empowered. And I would suggest, Muhammad, that once you did that particular instance with them, that they would feel more confident next time to do something without waiting for approval from Allah. maintenance or safety or anyone. Yeah, or Allah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> you yeah, know they have to. Yeah. Phoebe. Yeah, uh, Muhammad, you were saying, trying to say something. I will come back. Uh, after that. Uh, so just a just completion uh, sure. to our viewers today. today. Today itself, you will pass by people who are lacking confidence in doing what they should do. Maybe it's the store guy who uh, I saw a security guy one day, and he opened the barrier for us to enter the university for a program. And the way he gave me the directions, I said, do you know your English is above average? Did you know that? And it has, it's, it didn't, didn't supposed to be. Said, thank you, sir. I thank you very much. I said, your English will take you beyond this career. I promise you. And I just went. It was only two sentences, you know. Wow. So oh, oh, you will do a lot to people around you, your children, the people you work with, anyone, empower others on these minute levels. When you go to your organization, it will become easier for you. The, this this comes back to the point very much so that I was saying earlier, that people don't always have the confidence in themselves and their own ability, and they hold, them, they hold themselves back. We as leaders must be lifting people up to achieve things that they did not ever think possible. And it is incumbent upon us as leaders to do this. Mm-hmm. And I, Phoebe, I'll come to you in a moment. But I, I often tell this story that in the in the year, probably the only job that I went through an, a, an assess a, a, an application process for, and when I was in the interview process, not in the for the HR department, but with the person uh, in a senior position in the organisation doing a particular role, and he said, "Where do you want to go in the company?" I said, I want your job. I was interviewing to get a position <laughs> in the company, and I immediately said, I want your job. Now, I didn't want, I didn't want to take him out of a job, but that was the position that I wanted. Mm-hmm. And a few years later, I got to that position at a young wow. age. And I would say to people around me, if you want my job, I'll show you how to do it. I don't, I, I'm la- I was, I'd say, I'm lazy. I'll show you how to do my job. I wasn't, I wasn't being lazy, but... I wasn't just dumping on them, but I wanted people to learn and to grow and to see possibilities for themselves. So often we know that people have this inner voice that says, I can't do it. That's too hard for me. Others are better at doing this, so let them do it. No, we've got to push back on that and give people the absolute encouragement for them to conquer the world, to climb the mountain, to achieve great things. Phoebe, over to you. I'm sorry I took over before. No, no, thank you. Uh, I, I was just uh, reflecting on what Muhammad shared and, you know, empowering that people. And uh, I, I reflect back on my own uh, journey in where, where I had a professor who, who uh, shared that. Maybe you are enterprising. That, that word still resonates with me, you know. Keep on exploring. And that is what empowerment look like, look and feel like for me. And imagine that if we can do that with our team members, you can do that. You can do this. And I think as leaders, we have to have a scanning of our environment. Who are our people? 
how am i interacting with them how much time i am spending with them to know them you know we 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 always say that organizational uh, swot strength weakness opportunities and threats have that conversations with your team also so that they feel strengthened understand their weakness to improve provide them that learning opportunity which is required so that they can also move up make better decisions you know that is empowering to make them understand context intentions so that actions can be taken to move forward so and and that will be role modeled as 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 in the leadership challenge you know when yeah. when i see my leader empowering me that new leader is also going to empower other leaders and and that becomes yeah. a flourishing organizational culture wonderful contagious becomes contagious yeah yeah, yeah absolutely here's you no know, i've said before that my i have two favorite words I've said this in another conversation we had. What if, right? What if? But I've now got another four favorite words, words that should be used more often by leaders. And mm. those words are you can do it. Mm. You can do this. Not go and do it, but you can do this. That those four words are very empowering, particularly when someone's thinking, oh, I can, "I'm not as good as this person. What if I make a mistake?" All of this internal dialogue is countering what they can really achieve. And you know, there have been instances in in my life that I've seen someone do amazing things, and and they, they think, "Wow, I, I didn't think I could do that." Amazing things that they didn't think that they were capable of doing. And otherwise, when the manager holds them back, they're going to be suppressed. And I'm pleased with your story about the the gentleman who spoke English, and you said to him, "With English, you can achieve so much." And that would have him thinking about the now endless possibilities because he has the language of English to be able to use. So many people, I keep pushing this point, I know, but they hold themselves back, thinking, "I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough." and we know as leaders that we can lift people up to achieve amazing things things that not only surprise us but surprise them as well it's like fathers and and parents we see that our children do things that surprise them and even surprise us in the workplace with the people we're doing to be able to say you know you can do this really yeah if you need any help come and talk to me about it but i know you can do a great job these words are so easy to say but so you often do managers don't go down that path because they feel as you said before mohammed that they're giving their they're feeling their insecurity because if i help you to do this job you'll do a better job than i'm doing so i'm going to hold the information i'm going to withhold this i'm not going to do it. no i'm going to i'm going to make sure that i'm in control no no give your power away mohammed you give your power well, away I, yeah uh, i'm um, enchanted with you can do this I'm, I'm daydreaming of who am i going to say this today to you can do this actually we have a group to meet today co-facilitators we're embarking on a big project starting from tomorrow I think I needed this, uh, uh, these four words. You can do this. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. But just remember, there are, there's self-talk that so many people have, the internal dialogue, which is not positive. And, you know, I, I've said before that I want people, when they leave the interaction, this is my personal quest, if you like, that when people leave the interaction with me, that they feel better about themselves than at the start of that conversation. And you, those words that you are now remembering, those four words, when you use those words today at this meeting that you're going to have, Muhammad, you're going to make one person at least that you say that to feel better about themselves, which is what I want to have happen, than at the start of the interaction because you've said to them, you can do this. Yeah, that 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 words are powerful. Good. Well, gentlemen, we've come to the end, I believe, of our time together. 
And you can do this. You can help people achieve great things as we all hopefully can do this. The world needs leaders. The world needs leaders to grow other leaders. And one way of doing that is to say to people, you can do this. You can do a great job. And next week when we are together, I'm going to suggest that we talk about leaders listening. Now, someone's got to say, pardon, Graham, what did you say? That's part of the joke. <laughs> <laughs> leaders listening. Can we do that? Yeah. We can do this. We can do this. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and we will be back next week to help grow leaders around the world. Gentlemen, I'm always glad for your insights and your input and your, this conversation, which takes us down a path that we don't always know where it's going to end up when we start it, but it's always enjoyable. Thank you, Graham. I, I just like to share my thoughts. You know, we can do this and make it better. And I am sure our dear audience who are listening can also help us to reach this interaction with all of you better. Yeah. Do subscribe and we can do this. Absolutely. We can do this. Thank you, gentlemen. Have a great week ahead. Bye. You Thank too, you. everyone. Bye-bye.